we're going to start by opening the clip art library go into the dishes section so this will give us a nice recess base for our 3d model to sit in so it's going to sit below the surface rather than like an applique on so that's what the dishes are absolutely perfect for and there's a few within the relief clip art library within carveco maker it's about 500 models within there the real nice thing is that every bit of relief clip art or 3d model that comes into carveco maker is scalable and it is live okay. so once we've got the base in plate we're going to add a wolf to this so we're going to scale him down in the x and y axis move him into place problem is now he's going to sit higher than the surface itself so we're going to flip it to the side have a look at the height and adjust the z height so that the wolf sits within the dish himself itself so the wolf is going to get lowered to about 4.7 to 5 millimeters in height which is the height of the dish that i previously created i'm going to check that i'm adding him to the dish rather than merging him and put him in place always check this from the side to make sure that there's nothing overhanging itself otherwise when you machine this it won't quite work so that's pretty simply and quickly adding a dish and adding a wolf to it so we can go on to looking at the toolpath in and the machine inside so on the right hand side we have toolpaths we're going to use the 3d machine relief option and first of all we start off with a roughing toolpath and we're going to pick one of the tools within the library massive library within carveco maker we to use a two millimeter end mill tool from sane smart and the finishing one, we're going to use a one millimeter ball nose tool again in the same smart selection, but also there's Amana libraries in there as well as our own libraries, same smart libraries, um, sky one CNC libraries and more tool libraries being added all the time. The next thing to do is to create the material. So we've created it as 12 millimeters for the depth itself. And then we're going to select the roughing toolpath, and we're going to create that as a spiral toolpath. The reason I've picked spiral is because it's round. It gives me a much cleaner finish. If you are doing something round to use an offset toolpath, it will now calculate the first file and then it's going to do the, um, it's then going to have done the finishing toolpath. And then the next stage on this is to look at simulating it. The reason we simulate it is to see what it looks like before it ends up on the machine. So that's the end mill. The next one will be the ball nose tool. If I'm happy with this, which I am, I'm going to save these files out, um, which is basically saving the G code out, making sure that I've only got one of the tools in the right hand side. If I have a tool changer, then I can have both in the right hand side. But because I don't, I'm just going to have, um, first of all, the two millimeter tool, the roughing tool path first, because that's the large tool I'm going to start cutting with. Uh, I'll keep that on the right hand side and I'll save it as a memorable name and from the machine file I will select the machine this one I'm using the same smart 3018 once I'm happy with that I'll send that to the left bring across the ball nose tool and I'll save that as a one millimeter wall file and then I'm quite happy save my files I can go into Gerbil candle I can open that file itself the two mil the file the file will open i can take a look and if i'm happy with it in candle once i've set up my origins home positions within candle itself i can just hit the send button at the bottom and send it to the machine but obviously you have to make sure you've set up your home of your x and y your material top um, and all the other safety features and precautions you need to in candle to make sure it runs okay before you send it once you've done your one and your machine tool has stopped, you can then do your other toolpath. 